I'm excited about, again, the service. I, it would be something that I would use myself and I would absolutely recommend it to my peer group and my friends and people in my close circle. Welcome to lookingtobuyahouse.com. I'm Jake, the creator. Today we've got Sam Castiglione. Appreciate you being here. For those of you that know Sam, he's very well respected and appreciated in his industry. He worked his way up all the way from entry level sales to being president of Xerox, covering the state of Indiana and Kentucky. More commonly known in my world as Uncle Sam. That's true been my mentor growing up as far as business and life and mindset um somebody needed to keep you grounded someone <laughs> <laughs> so we brought him in today to talk about our brand new service that we're bringing to the real estate industry at lookingtobuyhouse.com no cost to you as the consumer where you get to leverage us as a consultation service to help you interview and find great real estate agents there's no one else out there that's doing as personalized there's people that help you get connected but no one that is personally calling and vetting them for you. And that's what we're doing here. Yes. Big difference. Huge difference. So how important to you is the decision behind buying that house? You know, buying a house is one of the biggest decisions you'll make in your lifetime. I mean, it's the largest dollar value yeah. um, purchase and, and decision you have to make. And I think sometimes people go into it and take it a little lightly mm -hmm. and don't really understand the magnitude of the decision. And again, how that can set you up for the rest of your life, or it could really, a bad decision there can really hurt you and put you behind yeah. for years to come. So it's a large, large decision. Sometimes they run into it and, and who they get hooked up with is just by chance mm -hmm. um, and not really a thought through process of how they pick their agent mm -hmm. and whoever's going to represent them in this very, very important transaction they're about to enter into. Huge decision. Huge yes. decision. And a lot of times they look for us for that guidance that our agent says for that guidance. Without a doubt, they defer to them for yeah. you know their expertise in that area. And sometimes they just don't have the backing and that uh, are deep enough as far as in the subject matter to be able to be that person that has the right answer each time. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the value in what we're doing and what we're bringing? I mean, when I think about the service and, and what you're really providing, to me, where I see the biggest benefit is you know, picking a real estate agent is I really, anybody only has their circle of influence and mm -hmm. the people that they know mm -hmm. inside of their circle. And what looking to buy a house .com is make it, it broadens that it yeah. casts a bigger net yeah. as far as being able to select the right rep uh, and make sure that I'm going to have that ideal person. And again, if I only know my aunt's cousin and that's all I know who's in the real estate game, that's a pretty small net that I'm casting as far as finding the right agent yeah. and, and I, it gives you options. I really believe that um, it gives you multiple options to be able to pick that right person um, and not limiting your search to just the people that you know inside your small circle. Yeah. Where would you see the value for you personally? You know, for me, could I sit down five different reps and go through the entire process at my kitchen table, inviting them into my home and going through that to be able to get the one that I want to pick. It's time. For me, it would be time. Yeah. I mean, I would see if I can get a consulting company yeah. to go and do all the vetting process yeah. and then just give me the two finalists yeah. after they've kind of gotten rid of anybody who really didn't make the cut mm -hmm. and then I can make my final decision with the two finalists, to me, it would be a time saver. Mm -hmm. That to sit down with five reps to go through my house, go through that whole process and said, nope, that's not the one. Nope, he's not qualified enough. Not enough experience. I didn't really enjoy that person. And then and then even after you go through the whole meeting, then it feels like the real inundated with calls start. If anybody's ever gone through that process, it just, it's never ending. Yeah. I mean, they just keep <laughs> kind of hitting you and hitting you and, and like, have you made a decision? Who are you going to go with? And that can be uncomfortable and you could just avoid all that uh, altogether yeah. by again, allowing uh, a consulting firm to really do all that vetting. They know some of the right questions to ask. They, they're going to get a lot deeper than I'm going to get being that they're from the industry. Yeah. Uh, they know the right questions. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter how professional and how much experience you may have. I, I don't have it in real estate. You have quite the experience with interviewing. That's true. Yeah. And I, I mean, think our viewers would love to see 
and hear from you, someone with as much experience and how you see the value where it's outside your industry. I mean, to give you an idea, when I landed in the Indiana, Kentucky market to take over, I mean, it needed a lot of help and there was a lot of change that needed to happen. Well, I went back and looked with my recruiter that in just under a year and a half, we ended up hiring together 92 wow. employees. To hire 92 employees, to give you an idea, you probably have, it was about a five to one ratio. So we would interview five people and you'd get one strong candidate yeah. that, that we could give a job offer to and they would accept. 500 interviews in nearly a year and a half. You get pretty good at yeah. doing interviews when you do that many uh, on a weekly basis. And you really get in tune with you know your ear. I almost call it your spidey senses when you're interviewing as far as getting that right candidate. And yeah. we really did make some great hires and the more you do it. But if I'm going to an industry that I don't really know what's the right questions to ask mm -hmm. uh, and getting those second, third level questions that to be able to have a consulting firm that I could reach out to does all the heavy lifting. And at that point, again, they 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 are me in the in my industry with 500 interviews. Right. That I'm gonna defer to them right. and let them find that right candidate because I would know the right questions to ask. Right. Uh, and what I have found as far as getting that right candidate is I want a charger. I want somebody who's gonna represent me, who's had a lot of success in like uh, you were saying that proven track record yeah they're gonna yeah. be successful they're gonna be successful here absolutely and many times when you find somebody who has uh, past history of success uh, any type of behavioral interviewing will tell you that previous success will dictate many times future success if they're maybe less than stellar mm -hmm. then that's usually what they're going to be in their future ventures mm -hmm. and i want to make sure we're getting somebody who has a proven track record mm -hmm. sometimes for a consumer that's hard to know when five reps come into your kitchen which one really is the performer yeah. and which one is maybe the the fraud leaving that to the professionals to vet that out yeah uh, to me for me personally it would be a time saver and then after getting all feeling all those calls yeah. um, that i could just avoid the whole thing that yeah. just seems like a really win-win type service even in the real estate world i think that's that's even a different animal altogether because um, they're also independent. I mean, they don't really have a boss right. that holds them accountable. So if you don't get the right person who's going to hold themselves accountable and who makes sure they get back to you on a timely basis and do all the things, they don't have a boss looking over their shoulder when you're like, well, call in and talk to the manager and you'll get something done. Yeah. Like, that's the person you're going to be dealing with. There yeah. is no manager or boss that they have. So if you don't select the right one, yeah. you may not be thrilled about the results that you get. And again, how attentive, how responsive. Um, it, like I said, there's a lot that goes into that decision. Who could benefit from the service? I mean, the beauty about the service is, again, it doesn't matter what walk of life you're in today. You, you could be on your ready to buy your fifth house, or you could be a first time home buyer. And anything in between, mm -hmm. that really the service, to be able to get a qualified agent Mm -hmm. that a consulting firm has been able to hand pick and choose for you mm -hmm. that everybody at can no benefit. cost yeah with, with zero cost to you i mean at that point there's no downside really to it i mean why not give yourself more options to choose from yeah. versus your aunt's cousin and limiting yourself to that's all my choices are that i know that's in the real estate yeah. game for for a decision that is as important as buying a home or selling a home to make sure you have um, strong representation and somebody who's going to advocate for you and look out on your best behalf. Yeah. How do you think from an outside perspective, you'd be able to tell if someone has that interest for you on an interview standpoint in terms of if that person's going to look out for you or are they putting on a good show at the interview? Cause you've gone through a lot of interviews. True. So how many times do you get told what you want to hear? compared to what the person is actually going to produce and do for you. Yeah, that, that's a great point. I mean, I think sometimes there is even professional interviewers out there. And again, they know at the surface level, what's the right answer. But where you really find that if you dig down deeper and you get that second and third level question, what I'm looking for many times is inconsistency with their responses, mm -hmm. that they have what they had memorized. But the minute we start going off script mm -hmm. and we're getting deeper in the questions, mm -hmm. that's where things start to get a little sideways for them. Mm -hmm. And you really find out, are they kind of a, a fraud and a sham? Or is this really what they do? Are they a true professional? Yeah. And it's it's part of their makeup. You can tell when somebody, tell. yeah, they're wired. It's in their, they know. yeah, it's in their gut. Like that's part of them. And then you know somebody who's just telling you kind of what you want to hear. And when you're doing that process and you got someone where you hear inconsistencies, 
how much pressure do you feel in the moment? And I know you're a master at this, but calling them out in a sense and bringing it up, it's not an easy thing to do. It isn't easy. It's it, uncomfortable. No. And people usually try to avoid confrontation and to be a great interviewer. And I've had a lot of people sit into my interviews and, and they even get a little uncomfortable. And I call it <laughs> candor. I mean, we're just going to be candid with one yeah. another and you have to be very direct. Yeah. And that's not usually part of most people's makeup. Mm -hmm. So when they can defer to a, a service uh -huh. that really will do some of that uncomfortable yeah. and vet out the right rep and they didn't have to spend the hours of their time at the kitchen table. And again, they may not know have the know-how, yeah. but, but it is uncomfortable when you're really digging in and digging in and digging in um, to get that right answer to ultimately get the person who's going to be the right representation for you. Because when someone has inconsistencies, they don't like to give you the right answer right away either. No. How many times, two, three, four, you got to keep going back to it. Okay, you, you kind of brush it aside again. Let's go back. What was the reason for this? Asking it multiple times in different ways yeah. to see if you can kind of trip them up. Yeah. That's and the beauty about the service. If you're a consumer at your home table yeah. and you go, wait, tell me about this again. And he kind of sidelines it again. I mean, how much uncomfortable do you want to get in your own house? and ask the guy four times and call him out on the spot. Jake, if you I, feel inconsistency and I, I really and don't think that sometimes the average person out there buying or selling a house is going through that whole process. Yeah. I think they kind of take the path of least resistance. And again, they know their neighbor has a friend who actually is in the real estate building and they just settle with that person. Yeah. I don't think they go through that whole full blown uncomfortable process to, to vet the right rep. Yeah. Uh, that's why I think the service really has a value to be able to go and do all that uncomfortable. And again, knowing that I'm getting the right person, but I just don't think the person has enough time mm -hmm. to go and do it the right way yeah. um, in order to do that. That I think they're just getting some acquaintance that knows somebody loosely and that's the person they're going to choose to represent yeah. them. Or calling someone from a flyer or calling someone from an ad. Or like we did, what we did is we had no representation. So we called into the listing agent on a house we were maybe looking and interested in. And, and twice we ended up with that agent, yeah, not knowing who that agent was, didn't interview anybody. They just happened to be there and said, are you working with anybody? We said, no, not at this point. And they said, well, I can definitely assist you with that. Mm -hmm. And, and one of the times I think it worked out really well. One of the times it didn't work out so well. And then when it's not working out well, you feel obligation. Was, that wasn't an ideal situation. It wasn't an ideal situation, but we're under contract. It's too late. Yeah. We Let's signed the paperwork. Going. Once you we sign, the, the contract's done. You have 90 days you've committed to this person. Yeah. So there really is no change in your mind at that point. Yeah. It's too late. Yeah. Would you use our service? I mean, absolutely. When, when you think about zero cost, that from a risk standpoint to, uh, to me, yeah. there, there's no risk. Why would I not want to, again, brought in the number of options I have yeah. as far as choosing the right real estate agent. And there would be no harm if I didn't like the person, I would say no, uh, have you bring me two other ones. Yeah. But the amount of time and the hours spent to get to that right person, that to reach out to a consulting organization, that that's all they do yeah. is find qualified, good track record, um, successful agents that again, could assist me in the biggest decision I'm about to make. Do you feel I'm qualified to vet people? Absolutely. I mean, in sales, one thing I found sometimes, number of years doesn't necessarily always um, dictate level of experience. It does, but level of knowledge, no. I mean, I've had sales reps that literally have been in an industry for 12 years. And many times they're doing it the exact same way yeah that they did it in year one. They have 12 years of doing it, but it's not 12 years of experience because they really don't evolve mm -hmm. and grow and, and improve and get better. They're still doing it the exact same way they did it 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the thing that's been most impressive with me as we've worked together in your sales career is how much of a hungry student you were coming out of the gate. I'll have a class of five individuals and right away, you know, one may not make it, a couple of them are middle of the roads, but then there's always those couple that really shine through that just want to get the information. They want to soak up the information. Again, I, I like to refer to the term as a hungry student. That person 
their trajectory, as far as their experience level, they're not 12 years of doing it the exact same way. By year three, they've sometimes passed up their first in 12 years. Yeah. So it's a misnomer that sometimes an older person and experience would mean that they're going to be more qualified or better. Uh -huh. uh, and I haven't found that to be the case in sales. Especially now with the internet and Oh, it's All a different that, world. That it's a it different too. world. I mean, the old way of selling in this industry has changed. Social media and being yeah. able to be plugged in and understand the strength of marketing. Um, some of the probably most seasoned experienced reps yeah. maybe have a big disadvantage in that area. Someone with the experience, but with sales background, but has has been on the front end of the social, the marketing, get attention on your house. Most people can't. Absolutely. Can do a video. You know, most people can't do a video walkthrough for your house, things like that. Very true. I'm excited about, again, the service. I, it would be something that I would use myself, and I would absolutely recommend it to my peer group and my friends and people in my close circle. Well, I appreciate you coming by today. Absolutely. It, was a, it was a blessing. Thank you very much for having me. So we are looking to buy a house.com. You've met him officially, Uncle Sam. In the years to come, who knows what role he'll play here. But I will talk to you guys soon.